Cry out with joy to the Lord all the earth. O oh, sing to the glory of his name. O oh, render him glorious praise. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. We welcome everyone today to this Mass of the third Sunday of Easter. And the Gospel today is about Jesus appearing to the two disciples on their way to Emmaus. And they only recognise him at the breaking of bread, a clear reference there to the Eucharist. So to prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharist, let us first call to mind our sins and ask the Lord to forgive us. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. On the day of Pentecost, Peter stood up with the eleven and addressed the crowd in a loud voice. Men of Israel, listen to what I'm going to say. Jesus, the Nazarene, was a man commended to you by God by the miracles, portents, and signs that God worked through him when he was among you, as you all know. This man, who was put into your power by the deliberate intention and foreknowledge of God, you took and had crucified by men outside the law. You killed him, but God raised him to life, freeing him from the pangs of Hades, for it was impossible for him to be held in its power, since, as David says of him, I saw the Lord before me always, for with him at my right hand nothing can shake me. 
So my heart was glad and my tongue cried out with joy. My body too will rest in the hope that you will not abandon my soul to Hades, nor allow your Holy One to experience corruption. You have made known the way of life to me. You will fill me with the gladness through your presence. Brothers, no one can deny that the patriarch David himself is dead and buried. His tomb is still with us. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn him an oath to make one of his descendants succeed him on the throne, what he foresaw and spoke about was the resurrection of the Christ. He is the one who was not abandoned to Hades and whose body did not experience corruption. God raised this man Jesus to life and all of us are witnesses to that. Now, raised to the heights by God's right hand, he has received from the Father the Holy Spirit who is promised, and what you see and hear is the outpouring of that Spirit. The Word of the Lord. Show us, Lord, the path of life. Preserve me, God, I take refuge in you. I say to the Lord, you are my God. O Lord, it is you yourself who are my portion and cup. It is you yourself who are my prize. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel, who even at night directs my heart. I keep the Lord ever in my sight, since he is at my right hand, I shall stand firm. And so my heart rejoices, my soul is glad, even my body shall rest in safety. For you will not leave my soul among the dead, nor let your beloved no decay. You will show me the path of life, the fullness of joy in your presence, and at your right hand, happiness forever. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. If you are acknowledging as your father one who has no favourites and judges everyone according to what he has done, you must be scrupulously careful as long as you are living away from your home. Remember the ransom that was paid to free you from the useless way of life your ancestors handed down was not paid in anything corruptible, neither in silver nor gold, but in the precious blood of a lamb without spot or stain, namely Christ, who, though known since before the world was made, has been revealed only in our time at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you now have faith in God, who raised him from the dead, and gave him glory for that very reason, so that you would have faith and hope in God. The Word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Lord Jesus, explain the scriptures to us. Make our hearts burn within us as you talk to us. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Two of the disciples of Jesus were on their way to a village called Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem, and they were talking together about all that had happened. Now, as they talked this over, Jesus himself came up and walked by their side, but something prevented them from recognizing him. He said to them, What matters are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped short, their faces downcast. One of them, called Cleopas, answered him, You must be the only person staying in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have been happening there these last few days. What things? he asked. 
all about Jesus of Nazareth, they answered, who proved that he was a great prophet by the things he said and did in the sight of God and of the whole people, and how our chief priests and the leaders handed him over to be sentenced to death and had him crucified. Our own hope had been that he would be the one to set Israel free. And this is not all. Two whole days have gone by since it all happened, and some women from our group have astounded us. They went to the tomb in the early morning, and when they did not find the body, they came back to tell us they had seen a vision of angels who declared that he was alive. Some of our friends went to the tomb and found everything exactly as the women had reported, but of him they saw nothing. Then he said to them, You foolish men, so slow to believe the full message of the prophets. Was it not ordained that the Christ should suffer and so enter into his glory? Then, starting with Moses and going through all the prophets, he explained to them the passages throughout the scriptures that were about himself. When they drew near to the village to which they were going, he made as if to go on, but they pressed him to stay with them. It is nearly evening, they said. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. Now, while he was with them at the table, he took the bread and said the blessing. Then he broke it and handed it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, but he had vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us as he talked to us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? They set out that instant and returned to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven assembled together with their companions who said to them, Yes, it is true. The Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then they told their story of what had happened on the road and how they had recognized him at the breaking of bread. The Gospel of the Lord. I like that story of the little orphan Joe. Joe went to be examined by the orphanage doctor. When he came back, the nun asked, what did he say to you, Joe? Joe answered. He said to me, What a miserable little specimen you are. And then Joe added, But, sister, I don't think he knew I had made my first Holy Communion. Now, from the passage I've just read, you will notice that a lot of the sightings of the risen Jesus occurred in the context of a meal. A clear reference there to the Eucharist. Last Sunday, Jesus said to Thomas, Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. Well, at Mass, we don't see Jesus in the flesh, but we believe that he is present with us under the appearances of bread and wine after the consecration of the Mass. And he also speaks to us through the readings here. That is God speaking to his people. I often referred to the two tables at the Eucharist. This, which I'm standing at now, is the table of God's word. And we're fed here on the word of God and it nourishes us. After all, in one of the Psalms it says, Your word is a lamp for my steps and a light for my path through life. And then after we're finished with this table, we go over there and we are nourished with the body and blood of Christ himself. That is Catholic teaching now, and it has been Catholic teaching for the past 2,000 years. You often hear people say, I believe in God, but I don't believe in the church. Well. Without the Church, there is no Mass. It's primarily through the Mass that
that we draw close to our Lord. And before Jesus ascended into heaven, when he said, Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of time, he was primarily referring there to the Eucharist, to the Mass. Jesus would have remained more or less a stranger to the Emmaus disciples if they hadn't invited him in to dine with them that evening. If you remember the reading says, he made as if to go on, but they pressed him, a bit like Mrs. Doyle in, in um, Father Ted, they insisted, they wouldn't take no for an answer, that he would actually stay with them that evening. If we bypass the Mass, then our nearness to the risen Lord, that cannot be presumed. Another important aspect of the Gospel today is when Jesus explained the scriptures to the two disciples. Surely that refers to this part of the Mass, the first part of the Mass, when we're nourished on the Word of God. The disciples said, did not our hearts burn within us as he talked to us? Well, we could ask ourselves the question at this point, do we ever feel the Lord is speaking to us personally through the readings or even through the few words that I say or another priest says in the homily? Our souls are nourished no less on the word of God at this table than they are at the Eucharistic table later on in the Mass when we receive Holy Communion. Now talking about the word Mass, it means Missa, which means dismissal. And like the Emmaus disciples, we are sent out from the Mass like men and women on a mission. The two disciples, full of joy after seeing Jesus, set out immediately, they said, to tell others what had happened to them on the road and how they had recognised Jesus at the breaking of bread. We too should be full of enthusiasm, God-like enthusiasm, and not keep our faith under wraps, not keep our faith to ourselves. Our faith is not just meant to be kept, we talk about people keeping the faith, they kept the faith, we say, and we commend them for it, but it also needs to be shared. The body of Jesus was broken on the cross, we know that from Good Friday. The body of Jesus was broken on the cross, why? Out, of course, out of love for us. Now bread, you will notice, cannot be eaten for nourishment until it is broken into chewable morsels. And there's, there's a, an important point to be made here. As bread is broken in the Eucharist, our task in this world is that we allow our lives to be broken in the service of our brothers and sisters. And I think we've seen a very good example of that over the past four or five weeks with this coronavirus. People putting themselves out for others, bending over backwards. We're really impressed by the work that the NHS has done and people are doing generally in their local communities. That's being broken. That's what it's all about. That is living out the Mass. And I think it's, it's strange that it happened during the Easter season because the Mass is sometimes known as an Easter sacrament. That's putting your faith into action. So like Thomas last week, the two disciples, if you remember, were downcast. But through their encounter with the risen Lord, they no longer feel dejected. The Mass, of course, will build up our faith as well and make us fit for mission.
We place our needs and the needs of the world before our Father in heaven. The hearts of the disciples burned within them as Jesus explained the scriptures. Let us pray that the word of God may come alive for us as we listen. Lord, hear us. The disciples recognized Jesus in the breaking of bread. Let us pray that we may be more conscious of the presence of Christ in the Holy Eucharist. Lord, hear us. Like the apostles who were initially downcast, let us pray for people who feel let down and disillusioned with life itself. May they find faith again through a personal encounter with Jesus. Lord, hear us. Let us pray for all the grieving families who have lost loved ones as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. May they be consoled in their grief by the Lord, who through his rising from the dead has won eternal life for us. Lord, hear us. Let us pray for the recently deceased, especially those claimed by the present pandemic and those whose anniversaries we recall today and in the week ahead. May they enter into the heavenly kingdom. Lord, hear us. We pause now and pray for our own. Lord, hear us. We now ask Mary, Mother of God, to intercede for us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our We now say the final prayer for those affected with the COVID-19 pandemic. Merciful God, come to the help of your people. Be our shelter in this time of peril and strengthen the bonds of our community. Bring healing to all who suffer the ravages of disease and assist those whose skill and art can put an end to this affliction. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, praise and glory in his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. 
church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given our cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the Lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your Church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Ralph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. And with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever.
Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we have the courage to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The disciples recognized the Lord Jesus in the breaking of bread. Alleluia.
spiritual communion in prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to have you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as having already come, and I unite myself entirely to you. Never let me be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Go now in the peace of Christ, Alleluia, Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia.